Rub up your engines! Today I'm going to talk about a deadly side effect of gasoline direct injection that hardly anyone is talking about. Now gasoline direct injections use high pressure fuel injectors to inject the gasoline directly into the engine, right into the cylinders. So it's got to use a lot of high pressure to spray the gasoline into the engine. It's called GDI because it's gasoline direct injection. The diesels have been used direct injection for ages, but it's a more modern thing with gasoline engines. But in gasoline engines, it has a deadly side effect that not too many people are talking about. And the deadly side effect is more fine particular PNs come out of a GDI engine because of the way they operate. Most of these scientists are now admitting create cancer in humans breathing them in. Ultrafine anything is bad for people breathing them in. That's why modern diesel engines have particular filters in them. The diesel is incomplete combustion and the particles, they have filters and stuff. That's why you got DPF fluid with a diesel to help burn it out of your exhaust system so that it doesn't clog up. And then you'd have to worry if your converter on a diesel was clogged up, you couldn't drive it, then you'd have to buy another one. It costs a fortune, right? It's a real expensive thing. So they don't have DPF on GDI gasoline engine cars. So these things put out ultra fine particles that can create lung cancer. And with the overall insane use of GDI engines, because they look better to the EPA, they get better gas mileage, right? And then we like them because they have more power. In the United States, as it stands today, they really don't have any laws for these small particles, the PN particles. They do in Europe but they don't in the United States. At least as the moment of making this video, even California, they were talking about having some kind of PN regulation of what cars can put out, but they squashed the whole deal and they didn't talk about it anymore. But ask any scientist, they'll tell you the small particle emissions from a GDI vehicle are higher than from a non-GDI vehicle. If they're both running gasoline, and here's a strange fact. If you ran your vehicle on natural gas, which can be done, it's not that hard to modify them. If you ran your car on natural gas, particulate emissions go way down because natural gas is already a gas. You put natural gas in any container, it immediately randomizes and it's the same amount all over the place. What fuel injectors do to gasoline is they atomize it, they make kind of a cone-shaped, upside down cone, of spray fine mist to burn. It's still a liquid. It's a liquid mist, but it's not a gas. A gas, like I say, randomly fills up the space. It burns much more efficiently. It doesn't have tiny particles coming out. Gasoline, unfortunately, with these GDI injectors under immense pressure, they are not uniform inside and they leave a lot of particles from unburned gasoline. That's just what happens with GDI injectors. Now, standing in front of a new Toyota Tacoma that's a V6 engine and that's the Toyota Dynamic Force engine. Now this is the 3.5 liter Atkinson Cycle V6 engine with direct fuel injection. As you can see it's a very complex engine. There's sensors all over the place and of course it's a Toyota. You start it up and run it. It runs perfectly fine. In this case it's a push button which I don't particularly like but you can actually see a few of the particles coming out because it started up. Now you want to compare that to this old matrix that's 17 years old. We'll start it up. You don't see anything. Same day, same driveway, nothing. And it's not as if this new Toyota's worn out, I mean. There's nothing wrong with it, really. It's only got 7,648 miles on it. But these GDI engines just do put out these fine particles, which most scientists agree can create lung cancer. One of the reasons we got catalytic converters on our cars because they were unburned hydrocarbons from normal cars. Carburetor to just regular fuel injectors. So they made a law, you got to put catalytic converters on, stop the pollution. And then they found out that, oh, the catalytic converters were burning too hot on the original cars that had catalytic converters. So then they had to hook up EGR valves to put burnt gas back into the cylinders so the catalytic converters wouldn't hurt and wouldn't create oxides of nitrogen pollutant, which also creates cancer in people. So who knows what's going to happen in the future? Maybe some guy will figure out a way to stop the little fine particulates that come out of GDI engines, but that doesn't exist today. So if you're getting in thinking, oh, I got this GDI engine, gets better gas mods, more horsepower, you're actually putting some really dangerous pollutants into the atmosphere that 
regular port injected cars just don't do. Now, of course, just in general, the GDI engines, yeah, they get better gas mileage, they have more power, they put out less carbon dioxide, but like I say, carbon dioxide isn't killing you unless you're just in a room full of carbon dioxide, it all dissipates in the atmosphere, and the stuff we're breathing always has a little carbon dioxide in it, it's not going to kill us, but these particular emissions will. So, there's a silent killer with GDI gasoline engines. Now, like I said, if you converted those things to natural gas, they hardly put out any particulate because they're running on a gas, not on a liquid that's being sprayed in. The gases are just more efficient and they burn a lot cleaner. Aside from all that, GDI engines are going to wear out faster. The fuel pumps, some of them have to put upwards of 2,000 psi pressure. It's a lot of pressure. The pumps on many of them are already starting to break down. The injectors themselves are under super high pressure. So, I asked an engineer at one of the companies, I said, well, how long do you think these GDI injectors last? said, oh, they should last 100,000 miles, right? That's what they told me. But of course, to me, that really stinks. My old Solica has got 240,000 miles on it. Still has the original fuel injectors. They're low pressure, maybe 40 PSI or something tops. They're low pressure. They're still the original injectors, and it still runs like a clock. I wouldn't be happy with having a car that you got to replace the fuel injectors after 100,000 miles or so. That's a pretty big expense, because these GDI injectors take all that pressure, some of them up to 1200 psi they cost a lot of money to change because they got to be well made they'll leak under that pressure you can make something to hold 40 psi no problem but if something's got to hold 1200 psi it's got to be made a lot better and if you go aftermarket with some cheap chinese made junk it'll probably leak start on fire and burn your car down and interestingly enough gdi engines often carbon up inside the reason for that has a lot to do with anti-pollution devices the older cars that have port injectors, the injectors are on the intake, so they spray gas directly over the intake valves. Gas is a good solvent, so that clean gasoline goes on the intake valves and keeps carbon from building up, it cleans them. But with the GDI, they spray directly into the engine, so they bypass the intake valve, which in of itself wouldn't mean anything except modern cars have PCV valve, positive crankcase ventilation. That vents the pressures in the crankcase from blowing all the seals of the engine up. Back when I was a young mechanic, you just had a hose that went bottom of the engine and it vented it to the atmosphere, so there was no problem, but that technically pollutes the atmosphere. So, PCV valve lets the engine crank vapors go in the engine and then are burnt. But those vapors are pushed by the PCV valve into the intake, so they're sucked in with the air, sucked over the intake valves, and that oil that's in that mist will create carbon on the back of the intake valves. I've seen Volkswagens, they were so carboned up, there was like half an inch, an inch of carbon buildup. You'd take the engine apart, get a sandblast machine, and put walnut shells, because they're softer, and blast all the carbon off. The European cars like Volkswagen, Audi, they have a real problem with the GDI engines creating carbon buildup that makes your engine run like crap, it pollutes more, it can overheat the engine, you'll lose power, you'll get worse gas mileage, all because it's a GDI system where the gasoline doesn't spray the top of the intake valves to keep them clean as you're driving. Now, as far as I've seen so far, the Toyota Atkinson cycle engines, of which this is that style, I haven't seen carbon buildup on. Toyota's got some pretty good engineers. This V6 engine can get 24 miles a gallon on the highway. It's not bad for a truck. My son's other Tacoma that his wife drives is a four-cylinder, 2017 and it only gets 23 miles a gallon on the highway. This actually gets better than the four-cylinder one because it's an Atkinson cycle, it's got direct injection, this four-cylinder one is just port injector, but realize the whole time though this new baby is putting out a lot of particles that can cause lung cancer that the old one does not. Years ago in the United States they made loss of pollution so they started using low tension piston rings, so there's less pressure in the engine, they get better gas mileage from less friction. Low tension rings though, they don't last as long, they don't seal as well because there's less tension. You start adding this high pressure fuel in, they blow by, that's another one of the reasons they put out more particulates. You got more pressure, just like a diesel engine has more pressure inherently because it's using diesel, it doesn't have a spark ignition, it goes by pressure. There's a lot more pressure inside them and they put out a lot more particulates. Well, you don't see it that much except upon startup with these GDIs, you never go down the road, you don't see them smoking or anything, right? But there's 
secretly throwing tiny particulates that they know cause cancer. So don't think that it's such a great idea coming out with these GDI systems unless they figure out some way of keeping these particulates from blowing into the atmosphere. Now as usual nobody else wants to talk about it but I am because I like telling people the truth about what's out there there. And even California as it stands today doesn't have any legislation stopping it. So maybe they will after they watch this video. I have no idea. But I understand there is a deadly secret to GDI fuel injection system with gasoline powered engines. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.